last August, um, we were in a time of prayer at the church and I heard the Lord say three things. Number one, he said, tell the people that they're getting ready to come into a season of a lot of chaos. I was not excited to hear this, <laughs> but I, but I'm glad to say I am a true prophet because I think that we are in a season of a lot of chaos right now. But I can tell you that the Lord said, I'm going to, I'm going to allow a season of chaos because I'm going to bring things that have been hiding in the darkness into the light. And the Lord said that through the season of chaos, the Lord says that he's going to actually uncover things that have been corrupt. He's going to uncover things that have been undermining the destiny of the land. And I heard the Lord say that in future days, we would look back and we would say, this was the season of great unveiling, or this was the season of a great uncovering that God, that's the season God's got us in. It's dark. The light is getting ready to shine. But God's getting ready to pull the cover off of many hidden things in this next season of time. But we have to go through this season of time of chaos in order to get there. But then I heard the third thing the Lord say is that he said it three times. He said, but tell them the God of peace is rising. The God of peace is rising. The God of peace is rising. And we know that that comes from Romans 16, 20, where it declares, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. And I believe that that's the season we're in. The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. It doesn't even say his feet. It says under our feet. Come on. It's going to crush him under our feet. The ecclesia, as the ecclesia continues to watch and pray and walk and pray and do prophetic acts and make decrees, God will crush Satan underneath our feet. I thought then of Isaiah 9 verse 6 when it talks about the names of the Messiah that is to come. And of course, his name is shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And of course, this word peace is the word shalom. But when it's partnered with Prince of Peace, it's the phrase Sar Shalom. I think it's very interesting that coronavirus is a SARS virus yeah. and that the, 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 the word for Prince is actually the Hebrew word Sar. Sar Shalom. Sar does not mean one who wears a crown, one who wears a royal robe, and one who carries a scepter. No. Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. The Prince is one who wrestles, one who one who fights, one who wars, one who governs, and one who rules. He is the prince that wrestles, the prince that wars, the prince that fights, the prince that governs, and the prince that rules. And he does this through his shalom, his shalom power. We know this word shalom. Shalom means peace and tranquility. It means to be healthy, to be wealthy. It means to have favor with God, to have favor with men. It means um, uh, prosperity. It means nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing damaged. And I believe that we're in a season that we have got to learn how to press in to this anointing where the Prince of Peace rises up, where the God of Peace rises up and begins to fight with his angel armies, with the Mahanaim to come and to fight and to rule on our behalf. But this word shalom is very interesting that I was talking to uh, somebody that is actually a Hebrew scholar. And they actually said that this word shalom has a deeper meaning based on the four Hebraic letters that it takes to spell this word shalom. Because we know each Hebra Hebraic letter has a word picture. And Hebraic scholars say that the deeper meaning of this word shalom is this. That peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos. That's exactly right. God said there's going to be chaos, but the Lord said peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos. And I believe within that we have our marching orders. We understand as the ecclesia, our job is to go in and to begin to destroy the authority of chaos in our families, in our homes, in our cities, in our churches, in our nation, taking authority and decreeing the shalom of God, decreeing the power of shalom over our nation. 
decreeing the power to see every enemy crushed underneath his feet. Every enemy crushed underneath our feet. I believe that we're contending for our nation. Um, we're contending for um, revelation. We're contending for uh, the, the, a, a new level of prophetic accuracy and a new level of, of prophetic truth to be released through the mouth of the prophets. I believe that we are contending for righteousness and for justice in the land. Righteousness and justice. I think that both sides of the political aisle want justice. We just may define it a little bit different, but he is the God of justice, righteousness and justice. Do you know that Maha Naim became a city in Israel yeah. Yeah. and that Maha Naim became a city of justice? It became the place that when David was crowned king over Judah, uh, Saul's descendant uh, Ishbosheth, actually, he was the last king in the house of Saul. Um, he actually fled to uh, Maha Naim looking for justice. And he actually was able to be there for seven years. David left him alone. Um, David honored the house of Saul. But it was in that place that eventually Ishbosheth was taken out by his own men so that David could be king, crowned king over all of Israel. It was a place that God set up to deal with illegitimate government and illegitimate authority. Again, when, Saul, when uh, Absalom overtook the throne of David, David fled from the palace, if you remember, and let Absalom have the palace. David fled. Where did he go? He went to Mahanaim because he knew this was the place of the angel armies. This was the place that he could go to receive justice from the Lord. He loved his son, but he also understood that what happened wasn't right. And so he went to Mahanaim knowing that that was the place of angel armies and that that was the place that God himself would give him justice. Mahanaim was a place of justice. And I believe this year that we're going to see God move in a powerful way to cause injustice to be exposed and to cause justice to come down and to rule and reign and that we're going to see the throne of righteousness and justice established in the earth again. And I just really believe that God is going to enable us to understand the power of the, the prophetic word, that double pay, that as we're contending, we're contending for that place of the double portion anointing to speak, to decree, and to receive revelation. When uh, in Isaiah chapter, I'm sorry, in Psalms chapter uh, 85 verse 8, it says, I will hear what the Lord God will speak. That word hear is the word Shema. And it literally means I will listen intelligently and I will hear uh, I will listen intentionally, sorry. I will listen intentionally and I will hear intelligently. I believe in this season of time, we need to hear the voice of the Lord. We need to press through whatever it is that we've gone through ourselves and contend with whatever there, whatever it is in the flesh or in the spirit like Daniel did until we're able to grab hold of revelation and contend for revelation. I will hear what the Lord God will speak for he will speak peace to his people. Debar Shalom. He will decree Shalom. 